So today's talk is going to be on everything surrounding inpatient headache management. Hi, everybody who's joined so far. I'm Dr. Jessica Kirashi from Montefiore Medical Center talking about inpatient headache management. So this is going to really be about what type of patients require admission to the hospital for their headache treatment management, um, when we think it's warranted to admit somebody, what kind of medications we use in the hospital, and when we sort of decide that patients are ready to be discharged and that their headaches are well under control. So most of the patients at this point who are going to be presenting to the hospital are people who've already had a headache diagnosis. So people who've already been worked up for their headaches. Um, they've been given a diagnosis of migraine or cluster headache or tension type or new daily persistent headache. And hopefully they've been plugged into some sort of outpatient clinic for their headache treatment. Um, so I'm gonna talk about the different reasons why people may get admitted to the hospital for management of their headaches. Uh, so one type is a patient that just goes to the ER because their headaches have become very debilitating and they just can't take it anymore. They might be in status migranosis, so meaning having migraine for 72 hours and it's been um, unrelenting and they're having a lot of disability from this. They're not able to go to work. They're having a lot of nausea, vomiting. Hi, everybody who's joined. Just gonna reintroduce myself. I'm Dr. Jessica Kirashi from Montefiore Medical Center. We're talking about inpatient management of headache. Then we're talking about the different types of reasons that people present to the ER and um, how we determine whether they should be admitted for treatment of their headache. So like I said, um, a big reason is patients who've had status migranosis for a few days, they've had a really terrible headache, they're having nausea, vomiting, and it's really disabled them and they can't function. So they present to the ER. And um, the important things to look at when a patient first comes in with these complaints is, is this a type of headache that they've always experienced? So is there anything new about the headache, anything unusual or different that's made the patient come to the ER? So red flags, for example, are somebody who has the worst headache of their life, um, what we call a thunderclap headache. And in those patients, we want to make sure that this is not something like a bleed. So we might require them to do some sort of imaging before we treat their headache. Or somebody with migraines who now has some different characteristics with their migraines that are concerning for stroke, for example, like they develop weakness on one side of their body, they develop difficulty speaking with their headache, and this is the first time this is happening to them, we'd also want to assess and do some further diagnostic testing, like getting a scan or an MRI or a CAT scan just to make sure that nothing new is happening in addition to their um, typical migraines. So if we decide that, okay, this is a migraine, this is uh, normal for this patient, then we kind of go through a treatment algorithm. And the first thing that ERs usually do and our ER does is we try a migraine cocktail. So we'll use a combination of medications, um, Reglan, Benadryl, Toradol, and we put an IV in the patient and we tried that combination. And usually within an hour, you'll see some sort of relief. If not, then we would move on to the next medication. Um, I should also add that if this is a woman, we'd like to get a pregnancy test because some of the medications that we may use to treat the headache uh, could be harmful to the fetus. Um, so the next medication that we like to use is valproic acid, which some of you may have heard of before. It is a medication that's been used in migraines, but um, it's usually used for epilepsy. And all these medications that we use work on different receptors in the um, work on different channels, like valproate works on sodium channel. And these are all uh, peptides and receptors that have been uh, known to have some relationship to causing migraines. So we'll try the IV valproic acid and we'll give it over 10 to 15 minutes and we'll see if that has any effect. Um, if that still doesn't seem to help, then maybe we'll progress to the next medication. 
and you know often we can try steroids um, we'll give a dose of IV steroids or if at that point the patient decides you know they don't really want to stay in the hospital they want to go home we could always send them with a steroid taper um, so if these things don't work and the patient's continuing to have a headache then we say okay maybe we need they need to be admitted to the hospital and we need to try something more aggressive um, some the next line of treatment that we usually like to use is IV DHE some of you maybe have heard of this before it's dihydroergotamine it's similar to medications like the triptan the sumatriptan um, and it acts on serotonin receptors and we usually give it through an IV we started at a low dose and increased the dose throughout the hospital stay um, depending on how much the patient can tolerate the most common side effect of DHE is nausea but patients can have other side effects like muscle spasms tingling sensations um, usually before each dose of the DHE we can give some anti-nausea medication um, like Zofran or metoclopramide, which you guys are probably familiar with um, before each dose. And it's important to have these patients in the hospital so that we can monitor them. Um, and the IV drugs are helpful, especially for migraine patients, because a lot of them are suffering from a lot of nausea, vomiting, and they're already dehydrated. Um, so we want to hydrate them and we want to treat them in a monitored setting. Um, other medications, such as lidocaine, uh, require telemetry monitoring. So we want to monitor the rhythm of the heart if we're using that medication. Um, so that's generally the idea when a patient presents to the ER and kind of our process of thinking to get them admitted. And the other reason that you might be admitted to the hospital for headache is, let's say we have a patient who is uh, going regularly to their outpatient visits, has good follow-up with their outpatient headache doctor or neurologist, takes prophylaxis, takes their acute medications when they need them, um, but then they just feel that for a few weeks their headaches are just getting worse and worse. They're increasing in severity or they're increasing in frequency and nothing seems to be helping. So their normal regimens that may work for them are not really working for them anymore. Um, or different combinations that have been tried with their doctor aren't really working. So at that point, your doctor might decide to do an elective admission, which is basically um, your doctor coming up with a date with you um, to decide when you can be admitted to the hospital. That way you would bypass the ER and you would come straight to a hospital bed and we'd already have a plan kind of set for you. Um, it's really important in headache management to take the individual and look at them as an individual and what things have worked for this person in the past, what kind of other medical problems this person might have that might help us determine which medications to use over other medications. So you've kind of probably got, gone through that with your doctor already, but when we admit you to the hospital, we already, it's helpful to have a sense of what kinds of um, medications have worked and what hasn't worked and that'll help guide us and what things to try when you're in the hospital. So, you know, we'll often like to admit patients to try DHE, uh, which we discussed a little while ago, which basically we started at a low dose. Uh, we get basic labs, we do an EKG, we monitor them and just make sure that they're tolerating the medication. And then every day we see if um, the DHE is helping and see if it needs to be increased or not. Um, and it's really important, the other point I want to make is that a lot of patients who have chronic migraines, the goal of the hospitalization isn't to completely get rid of the headache. Um, a lot of these patients have been living with chronic migraine and they haven't really had zero pain in a very long time. So it's unrealistic to say that we'll completely get rid of the headache, but the goal is really to bring the headache down to a level where the patient can function again normally and can go back to work or go back to their lives. Um, and that might just mean bringing it down a little bit. Um, the other things about DHE though, is that it's, um, you know, it, the effects of DHE can be seen even after hospitalization. So 
a study looked at, you know, two years out after hospitalization for DHE and patients were having a decreased frequency and severity of their migraines. So even though it's helpful in that hospitalization, it can also be helpful later down the line. Um, for people joining now, just wanted to reintroduce myself. I'm Dr. Jessica Kirashi from Montefiore Medical Center, and we're talking about the management um, inpatient for headaches. And we're focusing on migraines during this talk because um, even though patients can get admitted to the, head to, uh, the hospital for other types of headaches, such as cluster headaches, uh, migraines are actually the most common headache type that patients get admitted for. Um, and we just discussed the different types of admissions. So patients coming to the ER and getting admitted versus an elective admission by their doctor who wants to break a headache cycle. Um, and then the other thing that's important to discuss is medication overuse in a lot of migraine patients. So over time, um, patients may see that they need more medication and they may start overusing certain medications like triptans, um, over-the-counter medications, and medication overuse is really defined by using a over-the-counter medication for more than 15 days a month. And um, for triptans and opiates, it's more than 10 days in a month. And if migraine patients start overusing their medications, it actually can cause worsening of their migraine and cause rebound headaches from the medication overuse. So another reason that we may admit someone to the hospital is to try to wean them off of these medications. Um, so a lot of patients may be taking, you know, a drug you might be familiar with, Fioracet, um, which has butalbital in it, which can have a um, kind of make you need it more. It's, it has a little bit of a higher abuse potential. And it can also cause rebound headaches when you start taking it every day. Um, but the concern with it is that there are some medications that can cause withdrawal symptoms. So butalbital and barbiturates, for example, can cause seizures if you withdraw from them too quickly and you just stop taking them. So that's another reason that you might be admitted to the hospital so that doctors can watch you and wean you off the medication and make sure you're not having the withdrawal symptoms, and if you are, to treat you, and at the same time, help control your headaches. Um, so besides, so we've talked about DHE, um, lidocaine as an option in the hospital once you get admitted. And then the other thing is uh, that I like to use are nerve blocks. Uh, so a lot of times our patients that we know, maybe in an outpatient setting, have responded well to nerve blocks, we'll also do them in the hospital. Nerve blocks, for migraine, basically lidocaine injections, and we inject them into the nerves of the head, um, and we can do that throughout the admission, and a lot of patients, it really helps bring down the severity of their headaches as well. Um, so once we've done all that, then we kind of follow you throughout the admission, and we decide on when you're ready for discharge. And again, I want to emphasize that it's the goal isn't to get your headache to zero out of 10, it's to see if we can help give you some relief and break this current cycle that you've been in or the status migranosis that you've been in and so that you can go back to your life and function. Um, so it's important once we get to that point where your headaches come down somewhat, and usually I would say about five days is a typical headache admission, um, we then discharge you on an appropriate regimen Sometimes we'll make changes to the medications you were on before. If you were getting weaned off of something, then of course we would not want you to continue taking that medication um, excessively. And then we would make sure you have close follow-up with us at the outpatient headache center, um, usually within two weeks, just to see how you did since the hospitalization. And like I said before, um, the effects of DHE, for example, can be long-lasting. So they may help in the current admission, but they can also help weeks after the admission and months after the admission um, in helping decrease the severity of your headaches 